This short demonstration is going to show you how to use Academic Pub. Academic Pub allows faculty to create free ebooks for student purchase and posting in an electronic format or for student ordering in a print format, either black and white. You can search from thousands of different resources that are cleared already for copyright use. Um, there's open educational resources as well as many major public on the home page. The first thing that you'll need to do to use this service, and um, I should note that it is a free service, is you need to register for an account. Once you've registered for an account, you'll get an email verification, and once you've verified your account, you can sign. I've allowed the system to remember my, pass, my uh, username and my passcode, and that appears over here along the right-hand side, so I'm going to go ahead and sign in. Once you first sign in, you need to create a course name, type your name as the instructor, choose your discipline from the pull-down menu, the course level, and an optional course number. I'm going to do that now. Once you've entered all the information, just click Submit. Academic Pub is going to create a course for me, and it's going to assemble a different library for me based on what I put in for my discipline. I can look at peer recommendations, I can browse the library, I can choose items as a PDF, a Word document, or web content. So I'm just going to demonstrate a little bit of this. First I'm going to click on Browse Library. I can search the different items in the library by type. I can use title, author's name, industry, or discipline. I can use keywords. And I can also look at different provider. I can look at either all sources or I can search specific providers if I'm familiar with these. I should point out there is open educational resources. And I can also search by content type, which includes peer-reviewed journals, book chapters, case studies, study aids, textbook chapters, and news and general articles. When my search is complete, I can look at the details by clicking on details, and it'll give me a small abstract of different details for the different topics. So I can just briefly skim through those, and if that's something that's sufficient, then I can come over here and add it. I want to note that it'll, it'll indicate what year, the number of pages, and the particular price that your, each individual student is going to pay right here during your search. So I'm going to go ahead and just add this one sample piece of content. Now I can see it's added my piece of content over here on genetics and actually add my own PDF file. So this might be my syllabus or some other file. I'm going to choose my file from my computer. I'm going to give this a title and in this case I chose Ace Purposes. And I'm going to add this syllabus to my project. From there I now can see that I have two pieces of content. If I want to drag things around and reorder them, it'll do that. Now I drag these things around because in my final publication, either printed material or the e-version, it's going to come in the same order. It's going to paginate and put a table of contents at the beginning and it's going to be based on whatever order you put over here. The last thing I'm going to show is the web content. I do want to note that you can upload Word docs instead of just PDFs. So if there's a piece of web content that you want to upload, just click web content. This might be something like a Time Magazine article that I found on the internet or some other web related content. In this example, I found an article that's related kind of to biology, but it's just for demonstration purposes on winning the conservation war, how to manage the world we're stuck with. Uh, so maybe not necessarily biology related, but definitely science related here on Time. So all I really need to do is I need to take this URL that's up here, I need to right click and I need to copy that. Then I can come back to Academic Pub and I can paste that address in here, give it a title, and then down here it indicates whether or not I require the site's assistance with copyright clearance or royalty collection. And in this case it's an open web content that I'm going to use in a book that I create, so I do need clearance, so I'm going to click yes. And all I need to do is click this check permissions button. If copyright of, is cleared, you will get a message here that says rights have been granted. Associated fees, if any, are listed and will automatically be charged to each student when they buy the book. So in this case, this book is $2. So I'm going to go ahead and add this to my project. 
Now, in the case where I didn't get any rights granted, that's a, that's a piece of content you probably don't want to add to your ebook. Now, I can see I have my syllabus, I have my, uh, my content item I picked from their library, and I also have my Time Magazine article. I might want to go ahead and reorder these. When I'm finally done and I'm ready to actually create my book, all I need to do is come down here and click Create a Book. From there, it allows me to give it a different cover so I can choose something that might be based on my discipline. In this case, and I chose biology. I can give the book a title. And even if, if I wanted to get real fancy, I could choose a nice cover image that goes along with my book. And when I'm ready, I click Preview My Book. You'll notice it's going to give you a short message while the book is being created. And what it did during that process is it created the entire contents of the book. So if you had 15 pieces of content, it would create all of those for you. And you can see right here it's actually loading the ebook. And this is what it'll kind of look like from Student View. I can paginate, go to each page, and from here I can see the actual table of contents. It created my syllabus first, my Time Magazine article second, and my other content third. And the next page there is the Time Magazine article. You'll notice it stripped out all that stuff on the web page that is uh, not really uh, print worthy. And finally, I can come over here and I can see that piece of content with the abstract and introduction to genetics, which was the topic that I covered. You can notice down here on the bottom that there's the different prices for the ebook and the two different print formats. There's a basic black and white and a color. The black and white takes a couple of days to ship. The total price at this point is $24.95, and the color version of the book is actually a little bit more. It's $10 more, and it takes a few more days to process. So just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to assume that I'm done. Okay, so it's going to give me my completed book right here. I can, um, I can email it to my students. I can post this hyperlink right here into um, the learning management system, my courses. Um, and all I got to do is click on Copy and it says success your student access link was copied and that is what can be pasted into the learning management system or emailed to the student or it could even be emailed to the bookstore um, for printing purposes so really quick I'm going to show you what that'll look like when the students either click on the link in the email or in the learning management system I'm just going to paste that right up here in my URL I'm going to hit the enter key and from there it's going to generate the student view so from here you can see your custom made course materials are ready. It gives me the course name. I put in the word sample instructor. This would be your actual name, the start date of the course, and it gives you the different the different format options for students to choose from as well as, well as the price. The students just add it to their cart and it gets shipped to them just like we previously demonstrated. Thank you for watching.